Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Good afternoon and welcome to Sports Extra. I'm your host Ahmed Nawaz with the latest roundup of sports today. Bunch of things we will be discussing, but particularly with focus on cricket. And of course, in the second half, we'll move towards football. I'll just give you the lineup. First of all, Pakistan have won the series against Ireland in spectacular fashion. The third T20 international once again showed us the intent that we were talking about that Pakistan at least needs to play aggressive cricket. And then, of course, we'll talk about the results as well. But it's been very, very interesting the way things have unfolded after losing the first T20, then winning the second one, and then the third one. And I think uh, counting the performances in between as well, uh, now the team moves to England for the four match T20 international series. That is going to be uh, the real matter where we see that the combinations of team gets finalized as well. On the 22nd, we were expecting that Pakistan is going to announce their squad as well. The great thing to know is that Gary Kirsten, the head coach of the Pakistan team, is also joining the team in England. So finally, things will settle down there as well. Uh, a lot to talk about certain players, certain combinations, looking at the World Cup in general. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot of focus on the, not just the combinations, but uh, what kind of, uh, I think, strategy Pakistan should be adopting as well. So we'll go towards that and we'll discuss things in detail. Then, of course, we move on in the second half of the show. We discuss football. The English Premier League uh, comes to almost a close now. And it's very, very interesting if you talk about Manchester City, Tottenham, Marshall, everything in between is there to talk about. So we'll talk about things in detail uh, regarding the English Premier League. And like I said, that moving to the finale, it's very interesting that we talk about certain uh, points and certain games there as well. Uh, then, of course, I think uh, we will get a complete picture of what's happening and what's not. So we'll discuss that in detail as well. Now, of course, uh, before I introduce the guest, we've got a report on the game that took place uh, yesterday, Pakistan winning the series. Uh, let's take a look at this report by Sabah, and then we come back and introduce you to our guests. Pakistan beat Ireland in series decider by six wickets. This could be it. Oh, what an effort. Would it be enough? We'll have to have another look, I think. But you said they had bright spots. They were in the series. They After losing the first match by five wickets, Baba Azam led unit made an excellent comeback in the series as they won the remaining T20 internationals with dominant performances. Chasing the 179 run target in the third T20 international, Pakistan once again had a disappointing start as opener Saima Yub departed for the pavilion after contributing just 14 runs. Bawe and Rizwan dominated the island bowling attack as both scored half centuries and put together a marathon 139 runs partnership for the second wicket. Bawe and Rizwan became the first pair to score 3,000 partnership runs. They also became first batting pair to have 10 centuries stands. Baba Azam made 75 and Mohammed Rizwan added 56 runs for Pakistan. There he goes. It's the fourth. Mark Adir picked three wickets for Ireland. It's gone a mile high and it's been taken. Earlier, Ireland made 178 runs for the loss of 7 wickets in 20 overs. Skipper Larkin Tucker remained top scorer with 73 runs while Ande added 35 runs. Shaheen Shah Afridi led the bowling attack for Pakistan with 3 wickets followed by Abbas Afridi who backed 2 wickets. Mohammed Amir and Imad Wasim took 1 wicket each. Down the pitch goes Tucker and he's got enough on it. No, he doesn't. He finds long off. And Tucker's great innings comes to an end. In the air, Barbarazam takes it. This has gone a long way up. It's gone nowhere. Can Amir himself get there? Oh, yes, he can. That's an excellent running catch. Shaheen Shafridi declared player of the match for his outstanding performance. And there you have it. All you need to know about the details in this report by Sabah. Time now to introduce our guest. First of all, joining us in studios is cricket commentator, international broadcaster, presenter, and our sports expert, Kiasif Ahmed. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Wa alaikum assalam, Ahmed. I'm very well. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. We've also been joined by sports expert, Rizwan Haider. Assalamu alaikum, Rizwan. How are you? Assalamu alaikum, Ahmed. Thank you very much for joining us. And we've also been joined by a cricket expert, Murad Khalid. Assalamu alaikum, Murad. How are you? Wa alaikum assalam. Alhamdulillah. Fine. Thank you very much for joining us as well. Right, uh, Asif, uh, interesting series comes to a close now. But like I said, that it was interesting for Pakistan's case as well. Like I always say, <coughs> winning should be a habit. And they've clearly enjoyed the last two T20s and have, you know, certainly made a comeback in a sense that, you know, uh, things have been working to their expectations as well. Well, I think that we always enjoy cricket, but only when Pakistan don't play good cricket. And uh, the good thing is that Barbarazam is in form. And the people who were talking about 
some of the quacks and some of the specialist cricketers like uh, you know former test cricketer Basit Ali. Uh, Basit Ali, you got the answer. I'm still waiting a video from you where you will decide, yes, Baba, you can hit three sixes, three consecutive sixes. And by the way, that th 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 those were the four consecutive sixes from Baba Azam. So would you please delete your YouTube but, channel? But, but, I'm still waiting. But he said, he said against a top quality side. All right. OK, <laughs> now the other question. So question. Uh, uh, after uh, another question, you will expect whenever Baba will perform, you will get some questions <laughs> from Rizwan Sa, from Shirazi Sa, from everywhere. Anyways, let's go to the match. Yes, it was a good match for Pakistan, and uh, Shaheen Shah Afridi is in good touch. That's a good point because last uh, in the last game we were talking about his line and length, and whenever Shaheen Shah Afridi bowls a couple of good overs in the first six overs, then he gets some energy. And this is the problem uh, uh, with other bowlers as well. But uh, bowling with Amir, now you know that the Pakistan got a very good pair, as we do remember that Pakistan had an aura of uh, Bakar Yunus, Wasim Akram, and then Shweb Akhtar. We're still missing that we do not have those uh, that kind of class. But you know, if Shaheen Shafridi is bowling with the full spirit, and with the full momentum, if there is no ego of the captaincy and the, the, the environment of the dressing room is okay, I think Pakistan team could perform good. Uh, the problem is that uh, uh, Pakistan, uh, Pakistan missed some chances in the second game in the fielding. They dropped catches. The third match, it was much better. They've taken good catches. The fielding was much better than the previous one. And uh, the way Pakistan started in the batting, once again, strange why Saim, Saim Ayub is not thinking about his future. Everyone is concerned about his future, but I think the only one person, that is the Saim Ayub, who is not thinking that what's going on. Why he uh, always play across the, uh, across the line? That's the problem, dear. I have watched you in domestic cricket. You, ha you are such a fantastic talent. Why you not play with the straight bat? The ball he got out last night, once again, that was a straight delivery. He could have played over the bowler's head. He could have played towards even uh, uh, with the straight bat towards uh, mid on, but he went for the mid wicket or the square leg. That's the problem, you know. Uh, you cannot play with this speed, I mean, you know, and when the, the ball is swinging early on, there was a movement in the ball and he went uh, across the line through his wicket. Once again, he is under fire. Now, people are talking about that either is he fit for upcoming series against England or not. Those people mm -hmm. who are just raising the, you know, some, some slogans that Babar is not giving chances, Rizwan is not giving chances to the new players. Now mm -hmm. they're getting ample of opportunities. Now this is not their headache. Mm -hmm. Either they're performing well or not. So the Babar Azam played a tremendous knock. I think Rizwan and Basit Ali got an answer. <laughs> so, I think uh, a lot of things need to be put <coughs> into perspective, but you know, I'll come to some of the things that Asif has mentioned in a while and then we elaborate them further. But Rizwan, first of all, your overall analysis of the series, especially the way Pakistan has won this final T20 and have won the series as well. Well, I think uh, there was a complete essay by uh, As uh, K. Asif. <laughs> uh, but end of the day, I think Pakistan played well and Pakistan should have uh, won the series 3 0. The only point of contention for me is never Baba's batting ability. It has never been about Baba's batting ability, it has always been his position or uh, you know, his captaincy abilities. Uh, and I've always uh, questioned the fact, even when Shaheen Afridi was the skipper, that every time we win the toss, we, we tend to bat, and that's fine. But against uh, weaker teams, we should practice batting first, putting up a target, and that's where uh, the weakness comes in. For me, Pakistan team is a great team when, you know, you win the toss, uh, restrict the opposition to 170, 175, 180, and then uh, Babar Rizwan can finish the innings. But every time they get to bat first, they have no clue what the target should be. Uh, they take too much time reading the wicket. And even the first game that we lost, it was because we lost the toss. And at, against a team like Ireland, uh, batting first should not have been a problem. I can understand batting first, uh, winning the toss. You don't want to <coughs> bat first against Australia or India or Australia uh, or South Africa, England. But against teams like these, you should always take a chance and say, you know, we'll bat first, put up a total, try and go for 220, 230 and then see what happens. But uh, you know, once you make a 170, 175, the other teams are getting better as well. In, a, in the shorter format, it's always easier for the weaker teams, and the island showed that. You know, they were competitive, they had some good batting in Tucker and Tekta. Uh, similarly, they had some good bowlers. Uh, in the shorter format, there's always a chance for the other team, and Pakistan, a team like Pakistan should be winning you know, handsomely, making, trying to make scores like 220 to 230. 
and uh, that's where we feel uh, the team is lacking. Otherwise, the combination has played well. I still see Hassan Ali being a weakness. I mean, you need to get Amir back in. Uh, Hassan Ali is, is a weakness. Similarly, uh, Haris Rauf, he hasn't performed well in the last year, year and a half, but he's, and he's not even fit, but uh, they're still considering him. So it just shows lack of depth for the Pakistan team for me. Uh, as far as the openers are concerned, I think Asif is absolutely right. Saim has been given chances. He hasn't really played up to his potential. But then again, uh, for me, Fakhar batting at four, you can't have five openers, you know, at one, two, three, four, and five. You need to have middle order batsmen. And uh, this is where uh, we need to give priority. Certainly. Uh, I think to set the record straight, it's going to be this England series that is going to clear a lot of things. Because uh, I, I clearly, you know, this is a very personal opinion that I think that uh, we don't expect any chops and changes. Pakistan is almost sure of what kind of playing 11 they want. And especially I think it's going to change once you look at the game moving from USA to the West Indies with conditions as well. A lot of things need to be put into perspective. Uh, but Murad, uh, your overall analysis of Pakistan going into the World Cup, because certainly, you know, it's become a rhetoric now that we're almost the last team to announce a World Cup squad. But once you've got an ICC tournament, you're playing a series in Ireland, then you're going to England. Obviously, uh, practice helps and these kinds of series before a World Cup are essential. But if you look at the overall combinations of Pakistan team, which uh, is the best one that you think is going to help our cases uh, in the World Cup? Bismillah uh, rahman rahim First of all, I'll endorse uh, what my senior co-host already told and he uh, just uh, gave a very good insight of uh, what Pakistan team is has been doing recent past and what this series has concluded uh, a little bit brief on the bowling uh, it was not that much good uh, giving away so much runs 170 one occasion 180 on the other occasion and then 190 uh, on the three t20s so that means that we lack in bowling uh, there is something uh, that's not working uh, in uh, in the bowling segment besides uh, uh, what my co-host said that uh, we don't have any idea when we uh, uh, go for the uh, batting first. We don't have any idea of what total we should put because we, don't, we can't rely on the ballers. Uh, 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 previously, my co-host said that uh, in the era of uh, Vaseem Akram and Vakar Yunus, uh, at that time, uh, one uh, used to put pressure at one end, the other used to take wickets, and that was an excellent era for Pakistan team. Uh, but nowadays, even if uh, we talk about Shaheen Shah Afridi, he performs excellently. But on the other end, if he leak runs, then uh, that pressure is of no use. Ultimately, he's also going to get uh, like an ordinary baller. He's also going to look like an ordinary baller. So, uh, uh, talking about the preparation for the World Cup, uh, now we have already announced the squad for the World Cup, uh, you know, and we're the last one to uh, announce the squad. So, uh, we can't try any new combinations now. England series is ahead from 22nd of May. Uh, we have four T20s to play and England squad is a very good squad to test our potential. I think for England's case as well, uh, they really want to test and try their combinations as well. This is probably their last stint before the World Cup. So, you're going to probably witness a very competitive series on both ends. It's not only that we talk about Pakistan. I think England also need to be put into perspective. Uh, but Asif, uh, since we, you know, we're discussing the case of Saim Ayub and everything that is happening, uh, people mm -hmm. might not like this point, which I raise often. The fact is that you really need to ask the team management, or especially your batting coach, what's going on. Because if we look at him technically, let's just first of all, I think we'll move on to why he's not been, you know, given a good run in domestic season. That is another case that we keep on crying about. The first thing is that right now, if he's not, you know, performing up to the mark or if he's struggling, then I think instead of asking Saima, you, we've got to talk to the team management. Somebody's got to talk to the batting coach to work with him. Because what we see is something that we used to see in Fakhar Zaman initially, very strong on the onside. Uh, but, you know, uh, teams will mark you, they'll get you out on deep square leg or deep fine leg region, probably keep a squarish mid wicket and try to get you out there as well. Struggling with the offside right now, struggling with the full length delivery. I saw a video where Babar was trying to work with him in the nets as well, but obviously things aren't turning towards consistency. I will still highlight, I'm pretty sure he's going to be in the World Cup, he's going to open for Pakistan. I'll make it clear that, but the fact is that somebody really needs to talk to him. Well, Ahmed, to be very honest, and I wish if uh, you could watch his innings in Kadazam Trophy in Rawalpindi, mm. you know, while sitting in a commentary box, such a festivity that he's playing cover drives, he's playing cut short, uh, his on drive is such strong, his flick, each and everything, uh, his complete talent. But you know that the management uh, 
to be honest that, sorry to say these words, but I don't know, they're clueless what's going on, that he's only playing one shot, and that is the over mid-wicket, either it's a pull shot or if, if he is trying to play uh, with the wrist, uh, I mean the flick shot. Uh, the problem is that when you play this shot on a straighter delivery, there's a mighty chance that you'll get an edge. And what happened last night, the same thing. Um, the, the, the management expecting him to, to score you know, some quick runs within, with a strike rate of 150, 160. It's okay, but please tell him that you could make those runs with a straight bat as well. Uh, it's not only that you're always playing across the line. That's the problem. And I think that it's a very, very, very basic thing when if I'm understanding you're understanding we didn't play first class cricket Rizwan by understanding why don't uh, the management is not understanding so it's a question mark now second thing is Ahmed that uh, 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 we are not giving proper chances to the players who are performing so well in domestic circuit for a long time that's the problem please give respect to your domestic cricket learn from your neighbor country what they're doing they're not just bringing all the talent from the IPL even they're not even bothering. They're bringing people from the who are performing so well for, for two, three uh, seasons in the Ranji Trophy. Why? When you play longer format, you, your technique become better. Then uh, your tolerance, each and everything, your patience. You know that how to play, how to react in the field. It's not only about that you're going and hitting sixing and if uh, sixes, and if you're not getting the mm -hmm. game awareness. So I think that's the problem of Pakistan cricket that we're not now. Where is Arif Yaqub? Uh, I, I will ask this question to Rizwan Bhai and you and all of your all of the uh, guests here. That uh, the way he was bowling, especially in the death overs, that uh, he brought a couple of victories for Peshawar Zelmi on a crucial moment. He was just bowling with the flight, a proper leg spinner. And uh, once again, we brought uh, brought Shadab Khan. He was struggling. Even he was struggling in the uh, PSL as well. He didn't play uh, domestic cricket. Arif Yaqub played national T20 as well. So I think that when there is no justice, then you'll see the problems um, in the lineup, you'll see the problems in uh, the, the 14 uh, uh, member squad, and you'll see the problem in the management as well. Mm -hmm. Justice is really important. Do <coughs> justice with your domestic cricket. Well, I, think I, sorry, uh, I think I absolutely agree with Asif. If you want to have 10 batsmen who can, uh, 10, uh, 5 bowlers who can all bat a bit, then you're going to have to struggle. You need to have, as Kashif used to say, you have to have specialists. Uh, RF Yaqub is an ex excellent example quoted by uh, Asif because he's the one who gives flight right now. Uh, neither Imad Vaseen nor Shadab, uh, nobody is, is there. And Abrar is a or Abrar. Yeah. They're all mystery, but I don't even find what, what, what mystery is there about Abrar. They're all uh, literally bowling wicket to wicket, very, very, uh, you know, they, they just have a quicker ball, slow ball, and a bit of a turn. But nobody's giving flight, and you can't go to West Indies on slow pitches and have, you know, th that sort of an issue. Well, uh, but Rizwan, if you talk about condition-wise, we're still, you know, not sure what's going to happen in the U.S. Uh, West Indies, typically, what we know is going to happen. If you look at condition-wise, do you see certain changes in the playing 11 based on the condition? I think Pakistan is the only team in the world which does not consider conditions as, as, as an issue. Uh, we've made up our mind who our 11 is going to be. Uh, we haven't considered fast bowlers or spinners or anyone, you know, who's good for West Indies conditions. If you remember, Haris Rauf hasn't been bowling well for the past one and a half, two World Cups. Uh, Shadab hasn't been bowling well. He's, he may be getting a few runs, hitting a, a sixes left, right and centre. But, you know, his main job is to be a bowler. And if you're going to be stuck in your uh, ways that uh, the only people who've come in, Imad Vaseem, all-rounder as well, and you've got another left-armer in uh, Mohammed uh, uh, Amir. Mm -hmm. So you haven't uh, gone for the conditions. You haven't, you haven't got a pinch hitter at the top. Even if, you know, I don't, I don't mind Rizwan, I know Rizwan and Babar are going to be opening, but for, for certain matches, you could have tried um, Usman and uh, Saim as an opener, just a combination, knowing that in the World Cup, Rizwan and Babar are going to, going to bat, but uh, Usman Khan hasn't been given a proper chance, he sacrificed his nationality for, for another country where he could have played and made a lot of but money. But you really expect him to be given an opportunity against England? And I don't think so. If you, if you can't, you know, the problem with our team is we haven't uh, given opportunities against Afghanistan. We haven't given proper opportunities to players in, um, in, in the Irish series. I mean, for me, I would have preferred giving a chance to Usman uh, instead of Iftikhar, knowing that Iftikhar is going to play in the World Cup, but that's fine. Mm. Similarly, I wouldn't have mind if Pakistan had lost 3-0 but uh, Rizwan and Babar had taken a rest, you know. Uh, India keeps doing that. That's why Australia keeps doing that. They, they play second 11s, third 11s. 
uh, with when the players are being rested and they they playing uh, players are playing IPL or or other international or other uh, domestic cricket in their home fronts. But we keep on playing the same eleven, even if it's against Namibia, even if it's Afghanistan, or even if there is a match against Multan, you're going to see Rizwan Babur at the top, Shaheen bowling mm -hmm. the you know uh, opening the bowling. It's just uh, it takes a toll. Uh, they, I'd rather them be playing first-class cricket, building stamina for bowling 20 overs a day uh, in, a, in a day rather than just being uh, four-over bowlers. I certainly, uh, Asif, before you add, I, I, I certainly think that, uh, uh, obviously, I, I, I respect Rizwan's opinion, but I, what I am predicting over here and what I foresee, I think Babur's going to bat at three in the World Cup. I don't see it changing if, because probably they're going with the combination of Saim Ayub. Particularly, there won't be any change that's going to happen that we see. But, you know, you never know with the Pakistan team. I think anything can happen these days. No, Emma, sorry, I disagree. Uh, mm -hmm. I know even if Babur opens the, in the World Cup and mm -hmm. Rizwan opens in the World Cup, that, there's nothing wrong with that. The problem is you should be flexible. For certain conditions, certain matches, certain pitches, you can say that Babur can bat at five. Babur can, can even be a floater on certain mm -hmm. matches. Mm -hmm. We are just bent upon, you know, making sure that Rizwan and Babur are either opening the batting or in the top three. Mm -hmm. That should not be the case. It could be Fakhar for That's certain matches. That's not about me or you. I, I just what? think that if I gauge the team management's perspective over here, I probably think that they're going to go with the same combination. I actually I like the fact that there's rotation. Pardon Asif. me, sir. Yes, let's. Uh, yes. Actually, we are past, uh, mm -hmm. way past of that thing now. Mm -hmm. The squad is finalized already. The team is finalized already. And uh, these are the boys who, who, who are going to rep represent us in the England series. These are the boys who, who are going to represent us in the World Cup. Right. The thing is uh, mm. that uh, we should, like, like my co-host said, we should try some uh, alternatives. But we haven't done that in the uh, Irish series. Uh, in the England series, we should definitely go for alternatives so that we can see what our true potential is. But unfortunately, our team is selected. Uh, but we're not talking, Murad, we're not talking about the players that have been selected. Point point we're, talking about, uh, we're talking about the, the playing level, which, which particularly focuses a lot on the top three, which I particularly think, I, I because the way Babur's batting at number three, I don't think he's going to go uh, up the order. I think they're probably going with the same rhetoric. I'm sure Babur doesn't want what that. What if uh, Sam doesn't perform in the uh, England series? He's still playing the World Cup. I think the only... I'm sorry. I think I think the only reason Babur is batting at three is to accommodate Rizwan as opening with Azam playing. If Azam Khan does not play and Rizwan is uh, keeping the wickets, then probably Rizwan would come at three. And uh, Babar would be batting at number well, two. Uh, so uh, it, it's just right. a so comment. I'm going to take that argument, but Asif, let's just get you involved into the discussion be before it turns haywire. Very important that what's your perspective when, once you think of the top three over. See, it, it never happens and uh, it will never happen again that uh, Rizwan Bhai and me will remain on the same page. Okay. So the problem is Rizwan Bhai said that the Usman Khan didn't get proper chances. Okay. The question is that in cricket, there are no excuses, first sure. of all. The second thing is that when he got 10 overs, why he threw his wicket in second over playing? Why he didn't go 35 not out? Why he didn't go 30 not out? He always played a poor shot, a sh poor shot selection from Usman Khan. And that's why he failed four times against New Zealand, first thing. The second thing is that uh, 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 the problem is not with the Babar or Rizwan, because uh, Rizwan Bhai said himself that I do not have any problem with uh, Babar Azam's batting. I have problem with his skipper or with his uh, captaincy skills or maybe his batting order. That's the problem. But I think that when the other batters are getting chances, Azam Khan played 11 T20s, only uh, hit five sixes, I think, six sixes for him. And uh, other players, Fakhar Zaman got plenty of chances. He opened for Pakistan as well. He didn't perform. So the question is that you will fix those problems uh, who are uh, in, in the middle order. Actually, you guys are facing some problems in the middle order and mm -hmm. you got the talent like Azam Khan which is Azam Khan and Usman Khan sorry which are not fit for the international cricket here. Yes sir, Muraj you'd like to add to yeah, that yeah, argument sure, considering the combinations. Yes. Definitely sir so, uh, we need to see what task is assigned to each player. Mm -hmm. Right now Iftikhar he's given a certain task he need to score uh, 30 runs probably 40 runs in 10 balls. Uh, you can't have two same uh, type of player in a team you, you can't lose wicket like that. Azam Khan and Iftikhar, they both have the same task. Mm. They need to gear up the uh, run rate. So, uh, uh, we uh, uh, for me, Azam Khan is not in the team. Is not in the, uh, he, 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 in the current team, 
there is no place for Azim Khan uh, when you have Iftikhar for the power hitting and when you have Rizwan as a keeper. We can't, uh, we have seen uh, Azam Khan's uh, keeping skill yes, uh, in the yesterday match. Poor. He just missed a yeah. stump chance. Yeah. He just, uh, he was uh, trembling. He was not. No, he, he didn't miss it. He was, uh, the ball came too fast. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we were expecting him uh, that he was uh, playing as a keeper. So <laughs> you're right on that. No, with his weight to uh, body to weight ratio, I mean. So definitely, definitely, you are playing international. You re really need to see what uh, what what you are depicting, your posture, your yeah. body language, your everything. physique. Everything matters. It certainly does, but uh, I think <laughs> let's stick to the numbers on the on the scoring chart, and that probably you know gives us a perspective as well. Uh, but the fact is that, you know, once you, uh, I, I would clearly think, I think like Asif, uh, Rizwan and Murad have highlighted that your batting combinations, everything is very important, especially the middle order. But I more or less, I think the middle order is finalized as well. And like I said that I can make certain predictions based on my own opinion, but obviously the team management's got to make that decision and that call. But right now, another thing that's troubling us is the bowling department as well. And I clearly think, Asif, I wanted, uh, the, you know, this to be part of the discussion that I think gone are the days when you expect teams to be restricted to 150. I'm not saying that our bowlers can't do that. I'm saying that your batters now need to be mentally prepared, as Rizwan always says, that, you know, to reach that 200, 200 above mark as well. Well, that's right. Absolutely right. And I think uh, Muhammad Amir uh, still struggling because uh, yeah, in Pakistan, when he played against New Zealand, he was okay. Uh, his line length is okay. But the problem is with his pace, 130, 128, 130, uh, uh, miles per hour and then when we talk about that we do not have depth in the bowling because where is Haris Rauf no one knows that because he's, uh, uh, he's not completely fit then we have Hassan Ali what happened last night with him uh, Hassan Ali I think the character like Hassan Ali I don't know why you keep you know pushing him why you keep giving him chances I think you should keep Hassan Ali as a mascot <laughs> you know, for the entertainment <laughs> of the team, but, but as a player, I mean, he, I think he's past it now. And when and Rizwan, bhai, you have Muhammad Ali. He's such a fantastic bowler. Hamza Mir. Uh, Hamza uh, Mir. Which point is they're not going to yes, 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 yeah, 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 yes. no. yeah, you're right. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. have these this bunch of uh, squad right now. These players are going to play. I mean, the day you brought back Muhammad Amir, you you close the case of many players who wanted to play for so when Mohammed uh, see when uh, when we we had the news that Mohammed Ahmed is returning to the Pakistani cricket we were very happy that he's gonna come and we're gonna have some depth in the bowling as well uh, we're gonna have an, another bowler who's gonna make an impact who's gonna make some make some pressure but uh, in the Irish series he, he was nowhere he was simply nowhere he was not up to the mark his bowling was not like it was used to be previously the pace it has all gone away the swing there is no swing over there yeah. So, uh, bowling is a, uh, it's really critical and uh, it's a problem for Pakistan. And batting, uh, as usual, we are relying only on Rizwan uh, and uh, Babar Azam, mm -hmm. as always. And uh, God uh, forsake uh, Iftikhar Ahmed if he do something <laughs> in the book. Pass yeah. if you'd like to continue with what you uh, Yeah, saying. see, uh, you are rightly said that what happened, the time is gone now that mm -hmm. we have only these options. Uh, so, I think that uh, with these kind of options that Shaheen Shah Afridi, Naseem Shah and Amir, they should perform up to the mark because you know that this is World Cup and you'll be playing against uh, teams like India, Australia, England. Uh, though you have, uh, if you see Pakistan pool, you have only one tough game and that is only against India. And then Pakistan will play against Ireland, Canada and USA. You've heard uh, all the guests' perspective about the playing 11 and the combinations and everything very important. But the fact is that this England series in the four T20s are certainly going to give the team another chance to practice as well. But more or less what I think is the team combinations are finalized. Once the official announcement of the squad is made, then you'll figure it out as well. That wraps it up from me and the entire team of Sports Extra. It's goodbye for now.